Hello and welcome back to Classic Books with a Star. And we've been recently reading John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. We are currently reading Chapter 22. We are on Part 3 of Chapter 22. And well, what, Ma demanded. He said, tell you. She paused again and looked to see that Winfield appreciated her position. Ma raised her hand, the back of it toward Ruthie. What? He got work, said Ruthie quickly. Went out to work. She looked apprehensively at Ma's raised hand. The hand sank down again, and then it reached out for Ruthie. Ma embraced Ruthie's shoulders in a quick, convulsive hug, and then released her. Ruthie stared at the ground in embarrassment and changed the subject. They got toilets over there, she said. White ones. You been in there? Ma demanded. Me and Winfield, she said. And then treacherously, Winfield, he bust the toilet. Winfield turned red. He glared at Ruthie. She peed in one, he said viciously. Ma was apprehensive. Now, what did you do? You show me. She forced him to the door inside. Now, what did you do? Ruthie pointed. It was a hissing and a swishing. Stop now. Show me what you done, Ma demanded. Winfield went reluctantly to the toilet. I didn't push it hard, he said. I just had a hold of it this here. And the swish of water came again. He leapt away. Ma threw back her head and laughed while Ruthie and Winfield regarded her resentfully. That's the way she works, Ma said. I've seen them before. When you finish, you push that. The shame of their ignorance was too great for the children. They went out the door and they walked down the street to stare at a large family eating breakfast. Ma watched them out of the door and then she looked about the room. She went to the shower, shower closets and looked in. She walked to the wash basins and ran her finger over the white porcelain. She turned the water on a little and held her finger in the stream and jerked her hand away when the water came hot. For a moment, she regarded the basin, and then setting the plug, she filled the bowl a little from the hot faucet, a little from the cold. And then she washed her hands in the warm water, and she washed her face. She was brushing water through her hair with her fingers when a step sounded on the concrete floor behind her. Ma swung around. An elderly man stood looking at her with an expression of righteous shock. He said harshly, How do you come in here? Ma gulped, and she felt the water dripping from her chin and soaking through her dress. I didn't know she said apologetically. I thought this here was for folks to use. The elderly man frowned on her. For men, folks, he said sternly. He walked to the door and pointed to a sign on it. Men, there, he said. That proves it. Didn't you see that? No, Ma said in shame. I never seen it. Ain't they a place where I can go? The man's anger departed. You just come, he added more kindly. Middle of the night, said Ma. <clears throat> then you ain't talked to the committee. What committee? Well, the ladies' committee. No, I ain't, he said proudly. The committee will call on you pretty soon and fix you up. We take care of folks that just come in. Now, if you want a ladies' toilet, you just go on the other side of the building. That side's yourn. Ma said uneasily, you say a ladies' committee come into my tent? He nodded his head. Pretty soon, I guess. Thank you, said Ma. She hurried out and half ran to the tent. Pa, she called. John, get up. You, Al, get up and get washed. Startled, sleepy eyes. Looked out at her. All of you, Ma cried. You get up and get your face washed and comb your hair. Uncle John looked pale and sick. There was a red bruised place on his chin. Pa demanded, what's the matter? The committee, Ma cried. There's a committee, a ladies' committee, are coming to visit. Get up now and get washed. And while we were sleeping, sleeping and snorting, Tom went out and got working. <laughs> get up now. They come, came sleepily out of the tent. Uncle John staggered a little, and his face was pained. Get over to that house and wash up, Ma ordered. We got to get breakfast and be ready for the committee. She went to a little pile of split wood in the camp lot. She started the fire and put up her cooking irons. Pone, she said to herself. Pone and gravy. That's quick. Got to be quick. She talked under herself, and Ruthie and Winfield stood by wondering. The smoke of the morning fires arose all over the camp, and the mutter of talk came from the all, from all sides. Rose of Sharon, unkempt and sleepy-eyed, crawled out of the tent. Ma turned from the cornmeal she was measuring in fistfuls. She looked at the girl's wrinkled dress, sturdy dress, at her frizzled, uncombed hair. You gotta clean up, she said briskly. Go right over and clean up. You got a clean dress. I washed it. Get your hair combed. Get the seeds out of your eyes. Ma was excited. Rose of Sharon said suddenly, I don't feel good. I wished Connie would come. I don't feel like doing nothing without Connie. Ma turned full around on her. The yellow cornmeal clung to her hands and wrists. Rosa Sharon, she said sternly, you get up right. you just been moping around enough. There's a ladies' committee a coming, and the family isn't going to be frowny when they get here. But I don't feel good. 
My advanced daughter merely hands held out get, Ma said. There's times when how you feel got to be kept yourself. I'm a going to vomit, Bowser Sharon whined. Well, go and vomit. Of course you're going to vomit. Everybody does. Get over it. Over, then you clean up. You wash your legs and out them shoes of yarn. She turned back to her work. And braid your hair, she said. A frying pan of grease sputtered over the fire, and it splashed and hissed when Ma dropped the pone with a spoon. She mixed flour with the grease in the kettle and added water and salt and stirred the gravy. The coffee began to turn over in the gallow can, and the smell of coffee rose from it. Pa wander, wandered back from the sanitary unit, and Ma looked critically up. Pa said, You say Tom's got work? Yes, sir. Went out for we was wait. Now look in that box and get you some clean overalls. In a shirt, and Pa, I'm a bit awful busy. You get in Ruthie and Winfield's ears. They's hot water. Well, you do that, scrounge around in their ears good, in their necks. Get them red and a shining. Never seen you so bubbly, Pa said. Ma cried. This here's the time the family got to get decent. Coming around, they wasn't no chance at, but how we can. Thou you, your dirty overalls in the tent, and I'll wash them out. Pa went inside the tent, and in a moment he came out with a pale blue washed overalls and shirt on, and he led the sad and startled children toward the sanitary unit. Ma called after him, scrounge around and good, good in their ears. Uncle John came to the door of the men's side and looked out, and then he went back and sat on the toilet a long time and held his aching head in his hands. Ma had taken a pan load of brown pone and was dropping spoons of dough in the grease for a second pan. When a shadow fell on the ground beside her, she looked over her shoulder. A little man dressed all in white stood behind her, a man with a thin brown lined face and merry eyes. He was lean as a picket. His white, clean clothes were frayed at the seams. He smiled at Ma. Good morning, he said. Ma looked at his white clothes and her face hardened with suspicion. Morning, she said. Are you Mrs. Jode? Yes, well, I'm Jim Raleigh. I'm camp manager. Just dropped by to see if everything's all right. Got everything you need? Ma studied him suspiciously. Yes, she said. Well, he said, I was asleep when you came last night. Lucky we had a place for you. His voice was warm. Ma said simply, it's nice, especially them wash tubs. You wait till the women get to washing. Pretty soon now, you never heard such a fuss. Like a meeting. No, what they did yesterday, Mrs. Joe, they had a chorus singing a hymn tune and rubbing the clothes all in time. That was something to hear, I tell you. The suspicion was going out of Ma's face. Must have been nice. You're the boss? No, he said. The people here worked me out of a... Jobs. They keep the camp clean. They keep order. They do everything. I never saw such people. They are making clothes in the meeting hall, and they are making toys. Never saw such people. Ma looked down at her dirty dress. We ain't clean yet, she said. You just can't keep a clean, clean of traveling. Don't I know what he said? He sniffed the air. Say, is that your coffee smells so good? Ma smiled. Does smell good, don't it? Outside it always smells nice. And she said proudly, we'd take it in honor if you have some breakfast with us. He came to the fire and squatted on his hands and last them. Ma's resistance went down. We'd be proud to have you, she said. We ain't got much that's nice, but you're welcome. The little man grinned at her. I had my breakfast, but I'd sure like a cup of that coffee. It smells so good. Why? Why, sure. Don't hurry yourself. Ma poured a tin cup of coffee from the gallon can. She said, we ain't got sugar yet. Maybe we'll get some today. If you need sugar, it won't taste good. Never use sugar, he said. Spoils the taste of good coffee. Well, I take a little sugar, said Ma. She looked at him suddenly and closely to see how he had come to so close close so quickly. She looked for a motive on his face and found nothing but friendliness. Then she looked at the frayed seams on his white coat and she was reassured. He sipped the coffee. I guess the ladies will be here to see you this morning. We ain't clean, Ma said. They shouldn't be coming until we got, get cleaned up a little. But they know how it is, the manager said. They, come in, they came in the same way. No, sir, the committees are good in this camp because they do know. He finished his coffee and cleaned up. Well, I got to go on. Any time, thing you want, well, I come over to the office. I'm there all the time. Grand coffee, thank you. He put the cup on the box with the others, waved his hand, and walked down the line of tents, and Ma heard him speaking to the people as he went. Ma put down his head, and she fought with a desire to cry. Ma came back, leading the children, their eyes still wet with pain at the ear scrounging. They were subdued and shining. The sunburned skin on Winfield's nose was scrubbed off. There, Pa said, got dirt and two layers of skin. Had to almost lick them to make them stand still. Ma appraised them. They look nice, she said. Help yourself to pone and gravy. We got to get just get stuff out of the way in the tent in order. Pa served plates for the children for himself. 
Wonder where Tong got work. I don't know. What if he can? We can. If he can, we can. Al came excitedly to the tent. What a place, he said. He helped himself and poured coffee. You know what a fellow's doing? He's building a house trailer. Right over there, back of them tents. Got beds and a stove, everything. Just living her. By God, that's the way to live. Right where we stop. That's where you live. Ma said, I'd rather have a little house as soon as we can. I want a little house. Pa said, Al, after we eat you and me and Uncle John will take the truck and go out looking for work. Sure, said Al. I like to get a job in a garage if there's any jobs. That's what I really like. And get me a little, little cut down Ford, paint her yellow, and go a coyoodling around. Seen a pretty girl down the road. Give her a big wink, too. Purdy as hell, too. Pa said sternly, you better get some work before you get go a tomcatting. Uncle John came out of the toilet and moved slowly near. Pa frowned at him. You ain't washed, she began, and then she saw how sick and weak and sad he looked. You go on in the tent and lay down, she said. You ain't well. He shook his head. No, he said, I sinned, and I gotta take my punishment. He squatted down disconsolately and poured himself a cup of coffee. Ma took the last pones from the great pan. She said casually, the manager of the camp came and sat and had a cup of coffee. Pa looked over slowly. Yeah, what's he want already? Just came to pass the time, Ma said daintily. Just sat down and had coffee. Said he didn't get good coffee so often and smelt owned. What do you want, Pa demanded again. Didn't want nothing. Come to see how we was getting on. I don't believe it, Pa said. He's probably a snooting and a smelling around. He was not, Ma cried angrily. I can tell a fellow that's a snooting around quick as the next person. Pa tossed his coffee grounds out of the cup. You gotta quit that, Pa said. This here's a clean place. You see... She don't get so goddamn clean a fella can't, can't live her. In her pasta jealously. Hurry up, Al. We we are going out looking for a job. Al wiped his m mouth with his hand. I'm ready, he said. Pa turned to Uncle John. You a coming? Yes, I'm a coming. You don't look so good. I ain't so good, but I'm coming. Al got in the truck. Have to get gas, he said. He startled a, He started the engine. Pa and Uncle John climbed in beside him. And the truck moved away from the street. Ma watched them go, and then she took a bucket and went down to the wash trays under the open part of the sanitary unit. She filled her bucket with hot water and carried it back to her camp, and she was washing the dishes in the bucket when Rose of Sharon came back. I put your stuff on a plate, Ma said, and then she looked closely at the girl. Her hair was dripping and combed, and her skin was bright and pink. She had put on the blue dress printed with little white flowers on her feet. She wore the heeled slippers of her wed wedding. She blushed under Ma's gaze. You had a bath, Ma said. Rose of Sharon spoke huskily. I was in there when a lady came, come in and done it. You know what you do? You get in a little stall light and you turn handles and water comes a flooding down on you. Hot water or cold water, just like you want it. And I done it. I'm a gonna, I'm a going to myself, Ma cried. Just as soon as I get finished here, you show me how. I'm a gonna do it every day, the girl said. And that lady, she seen me and she seen... About the baby, and know what she said? Said they had a nurse, there's a nurse comes every week, and I'm t to go see that nurse, and she'll tell me just what to do so the baby will be strong. Says all the ladies here do that, and I'm a gonna do it. The words bubble out. And know what? Last week there was a baby born, and the whole camp give a party, and they give clothes, and they give stuff for that baby. Even give a ba baby buggy, wicker one. Wasn't new, but they give it a coat of paint, and it was just like new. And they give the baby a name, and had a cake. Oh, Lord, she subsided. Breathing heavily. Ma said, Praise God, we come home to our own people. I'm a gonna have a bath. Oh, it's nice, the girl said. Ma wiped the tin dishes and stacked them. She said, We are Joads. We don't look up to nobody. Grandpa's grandpa to he fit in the revolution. We was barn people till the debt, and then them people, they done something to us. Every time they come, seemed like they was a whipping me, all of us. And in needles, they, that police. He done something to me, made me feel mean, made me feel ashamed, and now I ain't ashamed. These folks is our folks, is our folks. And that manager, he come and sat and drank coffee, he says, Mrs. Joad this, and Mrs. Joad that, and how are we getting on, Mrs. Joad? She stopped and sighed. Why, I don't, why, I feel like people again. She stacked the last dish. She went into the tent and dug through the clothes box for her shoes and a clean dress, and she found a little paper package with her earrings in it, and she went past Rose of Sharon. She said, if them ladies come, you tell them I'll be right back. She disappeared around the side of the sanitary unit. Rose of Sharon sat down heavily on a box 
and regarded her wedding shoes, black patent leather and tailored black bows. She wiped the toes with her finger and he wiped her finger on the inside of her skirt. Leaning down, put a pressure on her growing abdomen. She sat up straight and touched herself with exploring fingers and she smiled a little as she did it. Along the road, a stocky woman walked, carrying an apple box of dirty clothes toward the wash tubs. Her face was brown with sun and her eyes were black and intense. She wore a great apron made from a cotton bag over her gingham dress, and men's brown oxfords were on her feet. She saw that Rosa Sharon caressed herself, and she saw the little smile on the girl's face. So, she cried, and she laughed with pleasure. What do you think it's going to be? Rosa Sharon blushed and looked down at the ground and then peeked up in the little shiny black eyes of the woman looked in, took her in. I don't know, she mumbled. The woman plopped the apple box in the ground. Got a live tumor, she said. She cackled like a happy hen. Would you rather have, she demanded. I don't know, boy, I guess. Sure, boy. You just come in, didn't you? Last night, late, gonna stay? I don't know. If we can get work, guess what we will. A shadow crossed the woman's face and the little black eyes grew fierce. If you can get work, that's what we all say.